A lot of women go through menses every single month without having an idea whatsoever what it is they are going through. In this short video, I will attempt to explain your menstrual cycle, the entire menstrual cycle, so you get to know what it is you have been going through and in case there are any irregularities, it will be easier for you to point that out and of course seek for medical attention. If this is your first time on this channel, do well to hit the subscribe button, the red button underneath this video and turn on the bell notification icon so you always get notified each time educative and informative videos like this are dropped. I am pharmacist Peter Edward and welcome to my official YouTube channel, Ask Farm Edward. Let's dive right in. The menstrual cycle begins with the shedding of the endometrium. Now, the endometrium is the walls of the uterus, the womb. The walls of the womb is the endometrium. Now, before we dive right in, there are a few terms that we need to define. One of it is endometrium. The endometrium is the lining of the womb, just like your body has a skin covering it. For the womb, the endometrium is like the skin of the womb. Now, there are a few hormones we also need to define. One is the gonadotropin releasing hormone called GnRH, the luteinizing hormone LH, follicle stimulating hormone FSH, estrogen, and progesterone. And it will also be nice we get to know what the uh, two important glands in the brain uh, called the hypothalamus and of course the pituitary gland. Now, the menstrual cycle begins with the shedding of the endometrium from the previous month. The endometrium is usually developed to be able to house or carry the fertilized egg that was released. So in an event where there is no fertilization, the prepared endometrium will shed out in form of blood and that is what you see when you begin to flow. Now, normal flow can happen between five uh, three to seven days. So you have flow of three days, you have flow of six days, five days, seven days, it is normal. Now, when once there is shedding of the endometrium, the brain, if that particular gland in the brain called the hypothalamus, will immediately begin to produce a hormone called the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will in turn signal the pituitary gland just close to the hypothalamus to begin to produce what we call another hormone called follicle stimulating hormone. Now, liking hormones to fields, fields. You want to drive a car, you have to use petrol. You want to drive a truck, you need to use diesel to be able to drive it. You want to cook in your house and you have a gas cylinder, you need to use gas. You cannot put petrol in your cylinder. Similarly, you want to drive an aircraft, you need to use the aviation fuel. So, in the same way, as you have different fuels, so fuel different engines, in the body too, you need different fuels called hormones to engineer or trigger different events in your body. And that is why these hormones are so numerous because they are actually doing different jobs and triggering or engineering different events in the body. Now, the hypothalamus releases the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will now trigger the pituitary gland to release another hormone called the fo uh, follicle stimulating hormone. This follicle stimulating hormone will now travel down from the hypothalamus into the reproductive tract and begin to and begin to and begin to induce the development of one follicle called the graphian follicle. Now the ovary is right within the, the ovum rather that's the egg is right within the follicle. Now but the follicle has to mature grow to a point before the egg can be released. Now, the follicle begins to develop. Now, there are glands around the developing follicles that will begin to produce another hormone called estrogen. Now, this estrogen that is produced will now travel into, you know, the womb to begin to induce the development of the endometrium. Remember, we will build a house for human beings to live in. Similarly, this estrogen begins to build the endometrium, the walls of the endometrium, preparing it for fertilization so that in an event of the fertilization of an egg the egg will see a comfortable house to come and implant and stay and develop now this same estrogen will also cause you know induce the cervix to begin to produce certain mucus that mucus that you see 
you know, that sticky mucus. The mucus is very necessary to enhance, of course, that's your fertile, fertile um, period. So you need this mucus to aid the flow of the semen through the cervix into the womb and, of course, into the fallopian tube to fertilize the egg that will be released. Now, towards the 14th day of the cycle, that's midway into your cycle, the hypothalamus will also produce another gonadotrophin releasing hormone, which will in turn signal the pituitary gland to also start producing another special hormone called the luteinizing hormone. Now, the luteinizing hormone will get to a particular peak on the 14th day of the cycle, and that peak will tear open the follicle to release the egg. You know, the follicle has matured, so it requires the, uh, the production of this luteinizing hormone to tear open the follicle and release the egg into the fallopian tube. And the egg, of course, will start its journey through the fallopian tube into the womb. Now, the, the empty follicle will transform into what we call the corpus lithium, a yellowish substance called the corpus lithium, which will now begin to produce, I mean the corpus lithium will now begin to produce another hormone called progesterone. Now, this progesterone will maintain the developed endometrium. Remember, the estrogen aided the development of the endometrium. Now, the endometrium needs to be maintained so that the, developed, the fertilized egg in an event of fertilization will come and stay. It's just like putting security in your house to maintain the house or to protect the house so that when you come back from journey, you know you can come back and meet a peaceful and habitable home. So the work of the progesterone is to maintain the endometrium that the estrogen has already built. Now, that happens. And then the egg already has started its journey through the fallopian tube into the womb. Now, the egg has two fates. The, the one fate is for it to get um, fertilized by a sperm. The other fate is for it to die. Now, if there is sperm, the egg obviously gets fertilized. If there is no sperm, within 12 to 24 hours, the egg dies off. Now, when the egg dies off, of course, there had been no fertilization. That was why the egg uh, died. And so, towards the second half, I mean, getting to the 28th day of the cycle, um, the levels of progesterone and estrogen begins to drop. The endometrium loses its consistency. It's just like when you don't have guards in your house and your house gets invaded and burnt down. That is exactly what happens. As the levels of estrogen and progesterone, because there had been no uh, conception, begins to drop, the once firmly maintained endometrium will begin to shed off again. And of course, we have another cycle which will you know, begin, you begin to see blood. So the blood you see, some people erroneously think that this blood is unfertilized egg. It is not. It is the unused endometrium that was formed, you know, earlier in preparedness for conception. So in an event where there was no conception, the endometrium sheds out and it takes between three to about seven days for this endometrium to, to get shedded. I hope you have learned a lot from this video. This is the menstrual cycle in a north shell. I'm going to be doing other video, you know, at some other time, explaining the fertile period because there are times when you are fertile and there are times when you are not fertile. And I'm going to do another video specifically explaining the cervical mucus, the different kinds of mucus in the cervix, how to know them, and these can actually help you to predict when you are fertile or when you are not. Thank you for staying tuned. Have a nice day.